Hey, I'm Erin Bradley Danger. I'm here with Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Biz. Everyone, I have the honor and the privilege of the company of Erin Bradley Danger today. <laughs> so thank you for joining me, Erin. Hey, thanks so much for having me. No, it's welcome. Um, yeah, I'm really, really thankful uh, that you accepted to come on. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> my pleasure, Chris. Thank you. This is awesome. No, oh, this is great. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I mean, I, I love doing these, and as I say, especially with Cobra Kai, it's been great because uh, it's, for me, it's um, doing the show is very much in a similar way to, to, to acting in the fact that there can be dry periods. And I've had a dry period for six months. So I thought the pandemic would actually help. But no, it, it just meant all the actors were looking to do other things, like starting their own podcasts. Oh. <laughs> so so <Right>. I, mean, <laughs> I was like, oh, right, okay. And then, yeah, I, Susan Gallagher, I think it was, um, I went yeah. through her, and then all of a sudden, you know, it just, like, spiraled. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Yeah. I've been <laughs> seeing a lot, and I've watched several of your uh, interviews as well. These are, they're great. So it's a lot of fun for me to, to learn <laughs> about what all these folks are up to as well. So it's real fun. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. No, this, but yeah, you're a really great bunch, and I think that's one of you know we're going to that one of the things that makes that show sp particularly special is the fact that you know you guys are so great with all the all the fans and you know all the well, cast. You're very yeah. interactive, so yeah, for sure. It's uh, and it's a lot of Atlanta people, which I think may make some of that difference because we are as a group of actors as a community mm -hmm. very supportive of one another which I've never been to LA but I hear that it's not like that there it's not like that in New York so I I don't know I feel like we're all here to boost each other and you know be supportive <laughs> and it, it creates a vibe for sure that's really yeah, nice. yeah definitely I think Atlanta is, is becoming a very big focal spot as well Atlanta and you're right I think everyone I speak to you are you're all from Atlanta everyone I've spoken to so far yeah or, 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 I mean, or moved to Atlanta should I say so you know basically. right and that's not to say that I, I'm not trying to alienate any of the LA oh cast, no 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 I know they're it's, all it's awesome very, as well <laughs> yeah but yeah it's a, sure. it's a very different lifestyle between yeah. Atlanta and LA you know LA is a very I think it's I had a guest on once actually called Manu Bennett and the first time I had him on, he was in LA. And when I first got him, he was, he's a brilliant guy. And the interview was, we spoke for an hour and 45 minutes to be fair, but he was, wow. he was all in the dressed up. He was on his mat, you know, making, cause he said the pressure of LA and you could see that in the way he was coming across, wow. but then he, he thought he wanted to do it again. So we had to do the whole thing again, but that time, but <laughs> the, the next time he was at home in New Zealand and he was in his daughter's bedroom and he, um, um, the video, we, there was no video because he was just in his basically shorts and t-shirt. And he was, the difference between him when he was in LA compared to when he was at home was so vast because in LA wow. he had to put on that pressure. He was so pressured in that environment. Yeah. Um, it, it completely changed the way he came across. Wow, that's wild. And it's not knocking I mean, it's hard to relax, I think, in general. But, oh, yeah. you know, but yeah, that's a that's a huge difference. It was. It was It was an absolute major difference. And I couldn't believe it myself when I saw it. And I was like, wow. That's, yeah. Yeah. That was nice of you to do it again. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I was, it was great. It was, he was um, Crixus and Spartacus, the series, if you're um, watching okay. Spartacus. Um, and I got him to say it's actually recorded on my show at the beginning because one of the favourite sarcos and the favourite sayings from that show when they're their words of swearing for, Jer for um, in the old Roman days, and he was like, mm -hmm. oh, Jupiter's cock! And he would start <laughs> saying <laughs> And his, he used to say that, his character, and I was like, please, please, please. So he goes, Look, my name is Manu Bennett, and by Jupiter's cock, I'm with Chris Gordon. <laughs> Great. I wish I'd have thought of something like that to do for mine. <laughs> it's going to be probably the best one I've done because I just the phrase was brilliant so I was like please, please say something like that and he was like <laughs> <laughs> that's cute cool all right back to you Erin because this is about you yeah it's all that's about right. me. it is no. yeah <laughs> I mean you obviously are a very you're experienced actress and talent very talented actress as well but you started out Thank in you. you're welcome and you started out in musical theatre which is what I love um so yes just, me too <laughs> it's fantastic stuff and i mean i've obviously read you were in a miracle on 34th street mm -hmm. <laughs> here's love is the um is the stage production of that mm -hmm. 
Um, but most people have seen the movie. So yeah, the um, Natalie Wood's character, Susan, this was like when I was, I think in fifth grade or something like that. Oh, I was okay. Yeah. So, and I had done school plays prior to that. And I think my first ever was in first grade it was the, um, it was called the elephant, hmm, elephant something or other. And I had to sing a song called the Limpopo River, which I don't remember anymore, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I remember loving it and going like, Ooh, when did we get to do this again? Mm. And, um, but that was the, Here's Love was the first major stage production. I auditioned, I got the role, um, months of rehearsal. It was at uh, this place called the Fulton Opera House in my hometown of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, okay. which was like this historic opera house that was built either next to or partially on top of an old prison. So it was rumored that it was haunted and oh, it had nice. all that good old lore that went along okay. with it. Beautiful stage and room and um so we did maybe like a four week or six week run it was it was a long run mm -hmm. pre-christmas and we even did some like promotional stuff where we had to go out to hotels and sing some of the songs for these groups of people it was crazy but i that was where it really the bug bit me it was so much fun i um i enjoyed it but now i i don't know that i i mean aside from the pandemic causing yeah. A lot of our stages, or all of our stages, I guess, basically right now to be closed, which mm -hmm. is a real shame. Um, it's a it's a time thing, you know. I'm yeah. married, I have a family, mm -hmm. and um, a few years back, I looked into auditioning for uh, something that was coming through here in one of our local playhouses, and I had prepared my audition, had my song ready to go, got my appointment. And when I showed up, they handed me a schedule mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my gosh, this is from, I think it was 6.30 or 7 p.m. until 10, at least five nights a week, sometimes oh, six. Then know. you have two weeks of tech and then the production. And yeah. my kids were little at the time. And I thought, I don't think I knew what I was getting myself into. <laughs> so I politely uh, gave my slot to another person and. So thank you very much. I'll be back when my kids are grown up. <laughs> but, you know, it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. I love anything with music and it really is the connection that Excellent. initially got me started with it. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Fantastic. And, you know, even the first person to say that about theatre is the fact that everyone loves the theatre. But um, it's the time consuming element of it, especially when we've got a family in two is yeah. I think in Atlanta as well it's been said I think um, the two Lewises Matt and Dustin <laughs> both said yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that it's different but difficult because they don't a lot of the theatres don't have understudies for example so you could go right. for a theatre role for a six month period or something but then yeah. there's no understudy so if you got you can't you, you probably miss out on you know TV TV slots or advert slots or films or series or yeah. anything like that and yeah you, you and it was matt lewis that. talking with you about that yeah, too? I think, yeah he does a lot of theater still as well mm -hmm. um yeah it's i, I uh, applaud actors mm -hmm. who are able to balance the two um but yeah i i enjoy the process and i think now with the pandemic it's actually um <laughs> kind of it's nice to just not leave your house and get the stuff done <laughs> but I do miss being in person in-person auditions are really fun and mm -hmm. you get to really connect it's a it's a whole different ball game but we're so used to self-taping here in Atlanta that it wasn't too much of a stretch yeah you do get a little bit complacent you get used to that oh just go in your taping room or go to your favorite taping service and <laughs> get it done yeah um and yeah, there's a, a big difference in the time allotment for sure. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, I was going to say, yeah, uh, especially for that as well. Going back to the musical theatre though, what's your favourite show? What's your favourite musical? Oh, well, as a kid, it was always Cats. Oh, I, I, Cats, yeah. But as an adult, I'm like, wow, that's just a whole bunch of songs strung together with no real plot <laughs> or anything <laughs> going on in between. <laughs> And yep. so it's still magical to me, but it's just, it's funny. Um, but right now, I mean, Dear Evan Hansen had captured my heart. I, I liked it so much. I saw it three times when it was here in Atlanta last year. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I finally got to see Hamilton on Disney Plus because oh, I had never uh, seen that live. So that was awesome. Uh, my niece is really into that and she can sing probably any of those roles. But um, <laughs> I'm, I keep telling her, you've got to go to New York. This is going to be something that yeah. you could excel at someday. Oh, yeah. She loves it. So we'll see. We have another star in the family. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I've not watched Hamilton yet. We've got it on Disney Plus here as well. So I've not seen it yet. And I really want to want to yeah. take the time just on a Saturday night and just watch it. Because I actually, yeah. I adore going to the theatre and seeing musicals. I've seen so many. Um, <clears throat> I can't list my favourite either. I mean, I've, I've actually, I saw Phantom on Broadway. Mm, wow. So Les Miserables, most Les Miserables, Lion King in the West End. There's been Car Carousel, West Side Story. Loads. It's just, yeah, wow. the list's endless. But what did you think about Cats the movie? <laughs> the new one? I didn't watch it. I was a little bit afraid <laughs> and just from the trailer. And then when people started panning it, I was like, I can't watch it because it'll ruin my love for the original. <laughs> so I have not seen it yet. But I yeah. feel bad that I feel like all the, the cast that they put together was all just such great people and they probably mm. had a lot of fun doing it. So I don't know, maybe at some point I'll get my courage up to check it out. <laughs> I do. I love the songs. Yeah, so, you yeah. Know, they, they've got um, the, I watched it um, uh, once. <laughs> yeah. So I, I won't watch it again. <laughs> Did they put a plot in it? Do they add something to it, or is it just like the stage production? It's just like the stage, oh. pretty much just okay. like the stage production. There is a little bit more plot around it, and it's obviously all, all centers around the Jellicle Ball, doesn't it? In a way, mm -hmm. and that's what they go for. But um, I just didn't like the character. The yeah. You had some amazing actors in there. Um, you know, yeah. Jane, Jane Judy Dench, Idris Elba, one of my favourite actors ever. But even Jane Judy Dench, I thought, was, um, you know, not her best performance. And whether I think it might have been the writing underneath because mm -hmm. it was, I, I don't know, and making the, I think, is it Grisabella? No, it's not Grisabella she plays, is it? I can't, Old Deuteronomy she plays. But old, oh, really? old Deuteronomy. Old Deuteronomy. That's, yeah. I like that. That's a good idea. It is, but t in T.S. Eliot, Old Deuteronomy is this grouchy old man, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> so it does work in a way. Cause, I mean, Dame Judy Dench is just an amazing actress anyway. Yeah, but she it's just, <laughs> yeah, she, she played it well. Um, but yeah, it's just I don't know. Uh, I think there's. I'm not going to name the names of the two people who I don't like in it. Mainly didn't like, and, and it's because I just don't like. I'm not keen on them in <laughs> normal life anyway. Gotcha. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. One of them I did actually try and get on my show because I said you've missed a chance because his surname is very like Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah. I turned around to his publicist. Yeah, he came to London and his publicist. When I wrote to his publicist, they said no, and I did write back very cheekily and just said you could have missed a treat. I said you could have had Corden and Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> he could have you in his uh, in his car for the yeah for the yeah uh, <laughs> that bit Harry that he does. Car. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind, I'll name drop him for something. I, he's, fine, he's funny, but I just, I, you, in Cats it didn't work. That's my, that's my dream. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I've heard from a lot of people. So I'll have to check it out at some point. <laughs> it's probably worth checking out. It was... differs, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, but... you did, yeah. You, you also said music, very centred about music, and obviously that's what mm -hmm. you've been through as well. And, um, you know, I mean, your husband also plays the drums. He's a musician too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he is. Uh, cool. We've only played in one band together, though, over the years, which is kind of funny because we've known each other for 30 years, I think. Mm. Um, and I filled in on bass with his band once when the bass player in his band um, had to have surgery. Okay. And, you know, they had a real shtick going. They were like a James Bond themed kind of deal. And so he the bass player told everyone that he'd been shot and had to have surgery to remove. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what happened. Um, but I filled in for that. And that but other than that, um, yeah, we've only played in one band together. But uh, we, we have a lot of fun just getting together and playing I'm songs. And, yeah, getting together with friends. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I don't play... I don't have time to do it all. So something had to give. And honestly, being in a band is like having another family mm -hmm. and as far as relationships. And, you know, you sometimes disagree with each other. Sometimes it's awesome, but also scheduling that, you know, every aspect of that, you're having to 
split your time between your regular family and your music family and then scheduling everything kind of becomes a nightmare when you're trying to book auditions and yeah. sometimes you have to be out of town for that. So I uh, put that on the back burner, but I may revisit it someday. We'll see. <laughs> and I've definitely had auditions where I've been called upon to play. I've played the drums mm -hmm. in an audition and even though that's not my primary instrument. Yeah. And I have, um, I've had one, I think one audition where I played some bass. Mm -hmm. but, okay. um, that's pretty cool. But yeah, so they overlap to some <laughs> degree, um, <laughs> even though and it's not musical theater, but you yeah, never know when you might be called upon to have a skill in exactly in a movie or TV show. So I definitely put it out there that I'm the girl that can actually play bass. Unlike <laughs> for not naming names, someone in uh, uh, the movie uh, Wayne's World, who <laughs> I don't know if they even bothered to try to teach her to play, but that mm. used to drive me nuts. I was like, they could have at least given her some basics so that it oh, yeah, like so, so like she, yeah. <laughs> I used to teach um, kids in the summer at girls rock camp, ATL, oh. which is a great organization uh, that has their individual groups, but they're united under the girls rock camp umbrella started out in the West coast, but they're all over the country and all over the world now, actually. So, um, you know, if you've got a young girl in your life who wants to play rock and roll, it's a great, mm -hmm. obviously with COVID, I don't, I don't know that any of the programs have been able to yeah. happen this summer, but, um, you know, we had a curriculum where you, uh, we would teach whatever instrument the, the girls were deciding to play. Um, I taught bass and, at the end of the week, they'd learn the instrument, form a band, write a song together. And at the end of the week, they'd play on a real stage at one of our pretty decent sized venues here in Atlanta and yeah. for, for the general public, huge show and with a silent auction and all kinds of other <laughs> stuff. But these girls, some of them never had any experience at all prior to that. And they could get on stage and knock out a song. So I just feel like we all owe it to ourselves as actors to at least try to learn. I mean, it's not, you can at least get, learn enough to fake your way through it convincingly. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to offer my services as a female who can actually play bass <laughs> for <laughs> anyone who needs that in a role. <laughs> so anyway. That's, that's, pre <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty impressive. I'm going to show you something now. If I just change off my, um, okay. my background for a minute. If I can just do, 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 do something. Oh, useful. you've got your kit right there. <laughs> That's awesome. And your dad played. You told me your dad <clears throat> played with uh, Brubeck. Yeah. I mean, that's the kit. That's the very kit that he used. That is? Oh, my gosh. That's when amazing. He, uh, when he passed away, he, he, he sort of left the kit for my son, who's now oh. doing his grade five. He's, he's learned he's training for his grade five drums. Uh, and he's, he's actually he's really strange because he's got my dad's techniques. My dad used to sit on the on the stool just at one side with his ear to the to the band, and obviously one more ear yeah. to the drum. He's just sitting there like that, and he's a proper you know the proper jazz drum in there. Yeah, <laughs> and he's picked that up perfectly. And he, he, he the last time yeah. he, he was three when my dad passed away. And oh, he was, so he, he didn't my, really witness it. No, uh, no, he, he sat on my dad's knee it. now and then, but he must channel it. But yeah, no, my dad played for Dave Brubeck. He's played for Dudley Moore. Um, Fry and Laurie, Stephen Fry. It was just it was, they came to the Footlights Club when he was in Cambridge, and when he studied at Cambridge, and they all played there. So he yeah. sort of played. He played the drums while while they came, and, and Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club in London as well. He played up. That's really cool. I I feel like that happens more with jazz than with. So I mean, there there are other genres that mm. I know. Indigo Girls, for example, hire the um, orchestras in different cities when they do those tours and play yeah. with them. But, um, and I remember there being a band when my band, the Holland Dutch was playing out a lot. Um, we played here in Atlanta at the Earl with a band called King Radio. Mm -hmm. I think they were from Boston or somewhere right outside, somewhere in Massachusetts. Yeah. And they were, I just remember being like, oh, this is so different. They came down, they were like a three piece, but they hired or commissioned local, uh, players to come and do the string parts of their something. It was, mm -hmm. it was really cool. I, I enjoy, I bought their CD. I still have it. I thought they were great. 
Um, but that was just so unusual for that, for rock and roll or for that indie style of music to, yeah. well, first of all, for anyone to know how to read and write music enough to be able to give someone some sheet music and say, <laughs> here, can you play this? But um, yeah, I love that, like how your dad would, would be sort of the session guy mm. when all these big names would come to town. That's really cool. Yeah, I only found that out quite recently. Well, no, I didn't find it out quite recently because it was something he always used to say. I've played for Dave Group. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> not one you keep under your hat, I think, if no. you've done that. <laughs> I've got some drumsticks, which he left. So we've got all the different types of sticks. And there's um, there sticks, and it wasn't Dave Brubeck. It was another one. But it was another famous jazz drummer who gave my dad those sticks as well at one point. So. Oh, wow. But, yeah, but it's, no, it's, great. it's great fun. It's great. <clears throat> yeah, talking about, sure. uh, and obviously talking about your multi-talents as well because you're obviously a graphical designer as well as an actress so yes yeah helen irvin who is one of the cobra kai fans she's asking yeah. what's, what's been your favorite job from all of those from a graphic designer actress music performer what was your favorite wow well thank you for the question helen um i don't know that i can pick i mean acting is really fun for it's fun to be other people and find that reality in that and explore it um graphic design is my day job which i'm very grateful for right now since um mm -hmm. you know there isn't a whole lot of acting stuff happening <laughs> yeah, at the moment true. and i have so many friends that work in industries that were also hit hard whether they're servers or um you know in other positions that were shut down Mm -hmm. um so then they they are sort of hit twice they can't act and they can't do their regular job so um but being creative people i've known several um that have really like my friend um michael has done friday night bartending classes okay. and you can donate money and tune in and learn how mm -hmm. to make a different cocktail and um you know so people have gotten creative about ways to to make money but um but so I'm very grateful to still have some graphic design work coming in. And I'm, I'm grateful that I chose a creative career. Obviously that's the thread there, right? Between the, <laughs> among the music and the design and acting is there's a creative yeah. drive in me to just be creating something, um, whether I'm telling a story or I'm putting something visual together, it's all, it all taps into that. And so I think that's why they, they've they overlapped for me so much over the years. Um, I actually, so I started out in graphic design with for my career after college. Mm -hmm. When I moved to Atlanta for a design job here, that was when I started a band called the Moto Litas um, with three other gals. And um, we were picked up by Damon Records, which is Amy Ray's label of Indigo Girls. Yeah. And then, of course, that in turn led to, I did some design work because all the bands on the label had to kind of pitch in. We would do things for the label as because we didn't have any fees or anything. Right. They would shop us around and pay all this money to put our albums out mm -hmm. and give us the chance to get traction and didn't ask for us to return that money. Like a lot of labels would give you a guarantee, but okay. you have to pay yeah. back if you're not successful. So. Um, so we would volunteer in the office and do stuff. And I just said, well, my talent is design. I can design mm -hmm. some things for you. So yeah. um, that led to designing several Indigo Girls albums and some of Amy Ray's solo stuff and a DVD that they did. I got to art direct. And so that was the first overlap. Mm -hmm. But then um, I've also more recently done some work for Drama Inc. where I've been training where Dustin works. Yeah. And um, I credit them with really getting me back into this because um, I had dabbled some in the early 2000s, mm -hmm. and, uh, but started training and really taking classes seriously at, yeah. at Drama Inc. in like 2017, I think I started back there. Mm -hmm. And I've done some design work for them as well. And so it's just, it's <laughs> nice to be able to, first of all, help your friends. You know, a lot yeah. of times people, even recently I, I helped um, Dustin with a flyer. And um, I have a crazy story if we can take a, a turn. <laughs> yeah, from, sure. So I was in Charlotte, North Carolina for a callback. Um, I guess it's been about a year now. And I went to sign in and 
wrote my name down and turned the clipboard back around. The lady said, oh, I'm sorry, is that Aaron Danger or Aaron Dangler? And I was like, oh, I get that all the time. It's Danger. And she's like, no, no, they're both, there's both of you. Which one are you? And I was like, <laughs> you've got to be kidding me. There's an Aaron Dangler? <laughs> so I, I told the lady, I said, oh, this one is, is me. And when she comes in, will you please wave to me? I want to know what she looks like. <laughs> so a few minutes go by and this striking tall blonde woman walks in mm-hmm. and signs in and the lady's like, you know, <laughs> that's her. And so I, I walked over and introduced myself and we've become friends and we, uh, you know, see each other. Well, with the pandemic, not as much. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping to see her later this week um, <laughs> for a socially distanced cocktail or something. We'll see. But, <laughs> um, but she, I had a point to this story, uh, Drama Inc. Oh, she also, she lives in North Carolina and she teaches right. classes and has, um, she's a consultant for, mm-hmm. she does a lot of different things, uh, all pertaining to acting and public speaking and performance and stuff. Yeah. And so I did a flyer for her. So it's just, it's nice to be able to kind of have a skill that I can help people with mm-hmm. that, um, you know, we all have little things we have to design for ourselves, whether it's for Instagram or when a show comes out that you're on, you want to do a little promo to send out. Yeah. So it's a good skill to have. Oh, yes, definitely. But, definitely. Yeah. Great story as well. That was very long. It's, it's so co- <laughs> coincidental. The danger and the dangler. Thing. <laughs> yeah, isn't it funny? And now she trains at Drama Inc. as well. And so I sometimes get emails that were intended for her because everyone can. <laughs> but, uh, but I can't think of anyone I would rather be confused for. She's fantastic. Excellent, excellent. I mean, with drama ring as well, because I've Catherine Dyer's been on my show too. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. That's so, right. Yeah. yeah, she's so, fantastic. Oh, she's she's a great lady. Um, you studied the Meisner techniques. I'm going to put Dustin under the cosh here because he's oh, a good yeah. teacher. Yeah, <laughs> he's fantastic. You know, um, Meisner. Yeah. A lot of people, all they might know if they've heard of it is like the repetition thing. And people aren't really sure where it goes from there. And even Mm -hmm. when I took the class, I had taken a a little sort of intro to Meisner somewhere else. And I was thinking, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. Um, And I realized that it was it was the teaching that Mm -hmm. made the difference. So I I knew Dustin before and said, well, I want to, I'm going to jump into your class and it's a six month commitment. It's a, it's an intensive, yeah. but it, that's still just a fraction of a quote unquote, like full on Meisner intensive mm-hmm. would be like two yeah. years, I think right. in New York, the original. Um, but six months is, it's a, it's a good in-depth uh, mm-hmm. study of it. And he, what I figured out right away in the first couple of classes was that this other teacher in the intro I had done just talked the whole time about stuff. And we might have a few minutes to try it on, but Dustin is a man of few words when he gets into class. And it's great because he'll give you just what you need to understand what's going on, Mm -hmm. but not infiltrate your moment. And it's really, he's wonderful. He lets you explore. I I feel like Meisner is a very personal journey that's probably a little different for each actor. Mm -hmm. You're learning the same technique, but you're, you have to really embody that from your own heart and standpoint. And he really lets you do that. So yeah, he's incredible. And I'm not just saying that because he's (laughs) a friend. (laughs) <laughs> and right. because he gave me a shout out in his uh, uh, <laughs> no he's great and he mentioned in your in the interview about um having that day on set together which was yeah. totally oh, magical yeah. it really was great uh I was a little bit extra nervous doing mm-hmm. that in front of him but um <laughs> no it was all good um how fun to be able to be on set doing something you love especially on the set of Cobra Kai where mm-hmm everyone is supportive and it's just a happy, friendly, loving set. Yeah. And then to have one of my favorite people <laughs> happen to be booked on the same day and get to hang out and in the, in the hallway in between setups and <laughs> catch up. It was really fun. I'll, I'll treasure that, that moment forever. Brilliant. Dustin's a great guy. He really is. He's yeah. a fantastic guy. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite people for sure. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's yeah, <laughs> really nice. Uh, so, what drew you talking about Cobra Kai? Then, what drew you to Cobra Kai as a show? I mean, oh, um, well, it was so 
it was brand new and nobody really knew much about the intent that these three mystery guys had yeah. uh, when it was the breakdown was released. So this was 2017, I think, um, fall ish. I didn't have an agent yet. I had only just been training at Drama Inc. for mm-hmm. like maybe six months at that point. Right. And you know, as a good acting studio, they encourage you to create an actor's access profile, which is free. Mm-hmm. Uh, you put your picture up there and your resume, which I had very little on it at that point, other than theater from millions of years ago. And um, and I had done one short film over the summer. And then the couple things I had from the early 2000s when I had mm-hmm. dabbled back in it. Um, yeah. Back in 2005, my good friend Emily Suarez uh, wrote and directed a short and asked me to be in it. So that's called Herringbone. And I, I did that and loved it. And yeah. um, so I had a few a few things to my credit, but not mm-hmm. much. And so I was just putting my own stuff there on, on Actors Access and responding to any of the breakdowns that fit my you know, my age range and look and all that kind of trying to be my own agent as we all do until you get one. Yeah. And I got this breakdown for Cobra Kai. I don't even, I'm not sure if it even was called that in the breakdown. Um, You know, sometimes they're very vague. They don't want a whole lot of information. Yeah, they're trying to keep it a secret. They'll give you dummy sides, like Mm -hmm. the part of the script that you read that isn't, isn't even, in it yeah um in this case i my sides were the scene so that part was the real deal mm-hmm. but um i just i read the the sides and thought i had an instant connection with the character i was mm-hmm. like this is in some ways this is very me um kind of awkward and a little bit particular and mm-hmm. some of some of the things i'm yeah. mm-hmm. not everything <laughs> hopefully <laughs> but um but I had this instant thought of like who she was and I really mm-hmm. wanted to audition, but I was over in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee on location shooting um, the murder comes to town right. episode that I was in. And so I thought, how am I going to do this? Because I had learned already from Jason McDonald and, and Catherine Dyer yeah. that you don't turn in a crappy looking audition tape. And you you know there are standards. I have my my gray wall behind me now and decent mm-hmm. lighting. But at the hotel, everything was a pattern. There was no plain wall anywhere. Um, there wasn't any good lighting. And at that point, I didn't have a travel kit that I took with me. With right. I have ring light now and a little stand and a pop up background and all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff I travel with, but. So I ended up, I spent uh, time in between scenes memorizing seven pages of this audition. And then that night at the hotel, one of my castmates was staying at the same hotel and and he agreed to tape me. We found this one wall that was maybe four feet wide and the door on one side went into the kitchen and the other, the edge of the wall, like when he, he tried to be really steady, but if he just went to the side a little bit, you could see the whole dining room. <laughs> it was just this terrible. And there was one light that came down where as long as I stayed standing pretty straight, it was okay. Mm-hmm. But if I gestured at all, it was like shadow. All over <laughs> it was so terrible quality wise, but yeah. I felt like the performance was there. And, um, and I even, Jason and I have laughed about this since like I, I emailed him and said, I'm a, I'm afraid to make a bad impression because this looks like I do not know what I'm doing, mm-hmm. but I really want to submit it. And, uh, it was late at night. And so I didn't hear back from him until the next day. And I was just like, okay, I have to hit send. And I, there's a place where you can put in the notes if there are special circumstances. Yeah. And so I explained I was out of town. I would be back in Atlanta on Saturday would be happy to retape or mm-hmm. whatever, but here you go and sent it off into the world. And then (laughs) the next morning I got Jason's response is like, do not send that to, (laughs) I mean, I didn't send in the tape. He didn't see it, but just from my description, he was thinking this is probably a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. But um, thankfully the casting director on season one, um, Bajo is what we call him, Olubaju Sanubi. He saw past it and was willing to take a, a chance on this, girl who looked like she didn't know what she was doing (laughs) and um put it through to producers and they had been this was I think 
at least the second round for that character. Mm -hmm. um, and I know people who audition for it the first time around through agencies, like legit yeah. established actors who are fantastic. Um, and I've talked to them about it since, you know, they've said, Hey, you know, I auditioned for that. And I'm thinking, how did you not book it? Mm -hmm. It was just something they were looking for, you know, something quirky that they hadn't found. And I was really fortunate um, <laughs> to have been the quirk that, it was <laughs> that had been missing. So it, it really, I have a, another friend, uh, Victor Rivera, who does a little bit of mentoring for folks that are moving to Atlanta that are mm -hmm. um, trying to find their footing here. And he said he uses me as an example all the time when he's telling them, you, you know, just go for stuff because you yeah. never know. And sometimes it is just that one special thing about you that that wins it. Because so many times we have no idea why we book or why we don't. And you you just have to be giving it your your best and your most real work. And sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. But I'm overjoyed that this was one that I actually booked. <laughs> it's such a great show. I'm I'm a fan as well. And um you know, I was not in season two, but I watched every minute of it. It's it's such a a, a well thought out, well written, um, genuine show. I think it, the the big three. I think their intentions really shine through yeah. in the writing, and they've cast it so well. It's, it's a joy to watch. I hope everybody will check it out on Netflix who hasn't already, because um, it, it deserves that bigger audience. Oh, definitely, definitely. It's great that it's moved in a couple of weeks now. It's not that long now before it moves to Netflix. I, really. I mean, I binge watched season one and two because uh, it'd been on my list. Cause I've got a huge list of stuff to watch, and it's just you know, like, yeah. with the time, isn't it? Just trying to get through. So I put yeah. Cobra Kai on my list, and we sat with my wife. We sat, and we just binge watched <laughs> seasons one and two because yeah. it was. It was just it, you just can't stop because it, like you just said, it's just such a well-made show, full, yeah. well, well-rounded acting, writing. Uh, everyone else involved, obviously, the, the stunts are brilliant. The, 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 oh my gosh, the yeah! Stunt choreography, you know, yeah. just absolutely brilliant. The music and the soundtrack, it, everything just fits in perfect. I'm an it 80s, really does. 80s great. They've, uh, they've hit it out of the park with the group of people they've put together from top to bottom. Really, I mean, it's it's amazing. Um, that made me think of the story I, I hosted the. Um, Cobra Kai Companion Sunday oh, night yes, yeah. All Valley Trivia Championship uh, two weeks ago, and so mm -hmm. anyone who's tuned into that, I've already told the story, but I have to say because I just I find it amusing that um, I told my parents, uh, you know, hey, Cobra Kai seasons one and two are going to be out on mm -hmm. Netflix, and for you know, as my parent, they're really only interested in season one, right? Yeah. But I said. Um, you know, you guys haven't seen it since we watched it. We had a little watch party with some friends here mm -hmm. in, um, and uh, they saw it then, but I, they didn't have YouTube and didn't really understand even how to subscribe. They're, they're older. Yeah. And so um, I said, aren't you excited? Now you can watch season one again. You can see the episodes I'm in again from the comfort of your sofa. And my mom said, actually, we canceled Netflix because we've seen it all. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's possible. They they meant that they had seen all the things that appealed to them, like yeah. all the Brit shows that weren't on BritBox or Acorn mm -hmm. and whatever else, any movies that had been on Netflix, they had already seen all that. And I'm not even sure they were streaming. I think they were still doing the thing with the CD that you, with the DVD, I mean, that you sent oh, back okay. and forth. <laughs> so like, we're going to get you signed up again. Because this is going to be a whole new animal oh, yeah. <laughs> now that you can stream things. And um, so I just thought that was funny. So hopefully we're going to really hit a wider audience if we can get all these people to to sign oh, up yeah. for Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that'd be great. They need help in that department. <laughs> no, no. I did see a great thing that's actually is um, halfway through the pandemic. It's like three months into the pandemic. Help me because I've completed Netflix. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. I feel like I, I tried really hard to, I, I had this mindset of like, okay, I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm going to, I'm just going to watch all the things that I've wanted to see. And somehow yeah. I've not managed to do that. 
I still have stuff that I'm trying to catch up on. And then I had to subscribe to HBO because I had to watch Patton Oswalt's, uh, the documentary about his um, late wife, Michelle McNamara's work mm-hmm. uh, with the Golden State Killer. Uh, yeah. You'll be, or I'll be gone in the dark. It's fantastic. The, I believe it's, it's a mini series. So I think the last episode just aired Sunday night and I wasn't able to watch it then. So that's on my list for this week. I've got to see that. And um, my daughter is watching for the first time, binging all of Grey's Anatomy because she wants oh. to be a doctor. So I've been watching that with her because I never really saw that the first time yeah. around. Um, we've been watching Breaking Bad again. And <laughs> I watched all of Better Call Saul. I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like I've been watching constantly and I still haven't exhausted my list. So there's a lot. It is. It's crazy. I've got to watch Grey's Anatomy again because they had it on our cable TV, not for Netflix, it was on normal, but they messed it around. We'd watched so yeah. many of them. We got really got hooked into it. But then all of a sudden it started season two and then they mixed it with half a season one. And it just, yeah. it just, it just got really mixed up. It's like, what are you playing at? So lost the track and we just gave up on it because it was just... Yeah. Got lost, so I've got to have to watch that again. I mean, at the moment, we're rewatching Sherlock because my wife never watched it the first time around. With Benedict mm-hmm. Cumberbatch, she, you know, completely addicted this time around. It's quite funny. <laughs> She's like, Yo, put the next one on. I'm like, what? I know. Like, it's it hard. <laughs> I would say that more nights than not, I fall asleep while we're trying to walk because my, my daughter's like, you know, I can watch one more. It's 12 o'clock at, at night or 12 30, and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, because I want to see it, and then I'm I'm asleep. <laughs> so I have to ask her what I missed. But, um, and you know, the other thing I have on my list too, are uh, all the shows that my friends are in that it's so great mm-hmm. to have um, access to their performances. So like Jason McDonald was just in the um, uh, Sweet Magnolias and mm-hmm. got to see that. And Recently, finally got to see Catherine Dyer in Psycho in Law because I had downloaded the Lifetime app, but I don't, mm-hmm. I didn't have some, I don't know. Once I got in there, it wasn't there. And there was some right. other tier that you had to be in. I could never figure it out. So I finally got to see that. She was fabulous. Um, so it's really fun to, you know, I think <laughs> my kids think I'm weird probably, but to be like, oh, oh my gosh, look, that's so and so. And I'm, I'm a fan as well as a, you know, um, as, a, as well as a friend. <laughs> no, it's great. I have to be fair, after people I interviewed, I was like that, especially with Dustin. You probably heard it when you saw the Dustin. Yeah. I didn't realise he was in Cobra Kai, and we were sitting watching Cobra Kai, and I was looking at the, head, he, the headmaster came out. I was like, there he is. that's Dustin. I said, that's Dustin. Yeah. <laughs> that's so fun. I know, and I saw him in Ozark, and I, I mean, I knew he was going to be in it, yeah. but so exciting to see. <laughs> and then his one performance, I, I think it was when we were still having... Um, we were in my in the middle of Meisner class and I went to him the next class it was like has your mom seen that and like how do you explain that to your mom <laughs> his mom seems super cool though so I imagine that she's all on board with with his craft <laughs> but I'm like, I might you know not tell my mom to watch that one I don't know <laughs> it's great I, but uh it it was really neat to see him stretch in that role I mean mm. just amazing uh, such a great show. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> well, it's good. My wife's annoyed with it now, though, because I do. I just sit there and go, they've been on my show. They've been on my show. I'm friends with them on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> they've been on my show. <laughs> yeah, my family's like that, too. Like, stop pointing everyone out. It's <laughs> distracting. Cause my son's into SWAT, and I'm like, Kenny, uh, you know, Kenny Johnson. I'm like, he's been on my show twice now. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, and then got... the kids are, of course, like, what do you think that makes you cool? Because it yeah. doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> although, although to be fair, the last time Kenny Johnson came on, I got my son in, and he, he, he spoke to him especially before, which was great. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Actually, the, the kids from Cobra Kai did that for me for my kids oh, too. Oh, it's love- so nice when, when folks do that. Yeah, they all got together and were like, "Hi," and said their names, and it was cute. Because at the time when I first got booked, and I realized who was going to be in it, mm-hmm. you know, now we all know who they are. But back then, um, I mean, my kids knew. Kirby Buckets, they had seen mm-hmm. that, so they knew Jacob, and they had seen Gianni in, um, uh, oh, the show with the twin blondes, I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, um, it's a Disney show, yeah. he was on that, and um, and they had seen, 
Oh, I don't know. Well, we don't have to go through all of it. They knew who a lot of these kids were. Yeah. And uh, it was just really special to them when I got to work with them that they didn't quite understand what I was doing. But then mm-hmm. I come home with this video of them all saying hi. And they were like, oh, my gosh. It's so, cool. <laughs> so it, yeah, it's neat it, when folks are are nice. Yeah, That's yeah, all definitely. Perk. That's that. it's when you when you work with that cast of Cobra Kai as well, it's you know because they are everyone I spoke to is such a lovely, well gelled cast, and everyone's like you said before, they're yeah. very supportive of each other in the cast. As yeah, well. yeah, and so friendly, and um, you know, well, of course, my my scenes were with um, with Ralph as Daniel, and I'm trying to remember. I I think it did say Daniel in the script. I I can't remember. I feel like it didn't fully know for sure if it was going to be Ralph Macchio that I I mean I didn't have a full sense of it Mm -hmm. so when I got onto set and we walked into the room I was I was a little I was a little nervous because I realized that this is happening and uh and I had seen Cobra Kai I mean Mm -hmm. I I had seen Karate Kid um as a younger person and so of course um I understood the magnitude (laughs) of that moment um, but he was such a consummate professional, you know, he just, um, so kind and really cool to watch because he's an executive producer on the show as well. And so he had a lot of input in the moments before we would roll that right. uh, a regular actor wouldn't, you know, but just conversations he would have with the camera department people and talking about well, which which lens are you using? What's the framing? And it was just such a great learning experience watching him work mm-hmm. and so professional and obviously so well respected. And uh, it was, it was really cool. Very cool. Especially for my, fr- I almost wish I could go back and relive that moment now knowing more of what I know, um, <laughs> you know, just to, there were probably things I missed in watching yeah. him do that, that I would glean more from now, but um, but that was a, a really special day for sure. Oh, fantastic. That's great. I mean, those two are great. I mean, I love those scenes with um, with Ralph and Billy together as well. Oh, they're some yeah. of the best ones oh, ever. Yeah. And it's, I mean, that's what's it's so round. I was actually reminded one of the funniest things was when um, Billy as Johnny, uh, he got the uh, the internet for the first time. In the yeah. <laughs> and it's like, yes, the, the to thing. The <laughs> <laughs> the screen comes up with it and goes, there, dinosaurs were built in the pyramids. I knew it. <laughs> I like uh, the hash brown thing too when he's uh, oh, yeah. into the hash oh, like, that a hashtag. Hash <laughs> so cute. It is I was uh, I was laughing the other day just thinking about the the time that has passed and also the fact that with the pandemic I haven't had a haircut. Like I'm looking at the at the image of me behind you, I'm like <laughs> Here's oh, no, Kevin yeah. Platt, and now I look more like I'm trying to compete with uh, homeless Lynn. With the <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm but, sure uh, she has something to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't compete with homeless Lynn. No, you can't. especially if you have a burrito, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna hurt. But, you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, such a great group of people, and um, and a really cool storyline. I think they've picked up where the movie movies but i mean i've admitted before i have not seen the later installments to the, no, the movie <laughs> series but i've been told that's okay <laughs> that's like, yeah, yeah that's, not it's a problem fine not to have seen those. <laughs> <laughs> the original um well one and two but um they've just done, done such a great job picking up where it left off and creating mm-hmm. what feels like a very real and believable life that those two would be living now yeah um and yeah, and of course, Billy uh, is a super, super nice guy. That first day that, that I was on set, he was there. He was just coming in at lunch mm-hmm. and um, or might have been the second day, but it was early on. And um, he and his kids and his wife had gone to the I call it the um, Children's Germs on Museum, but the, the hands on museum, you, uh, know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're picking up all their questionable things there but mm-hmm. they have hand washing stations yeah. but they had gone and done all the atlanta tourist stuff that okay. morning and then come and i i got to sit with them at lunch and his son was adorable just telling me all about all the things that they <laughs> saw and all the things that he touched and yeah. <laughs> so cute. they were just the nicest people and 
that was because I didn't get to work with him. I yeah. didn't have any scenes with him. So that was a nice moment to be able to sit and have a meal and get to know them a little bit. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> it, is, it's, it's, it just sounds like it's, it is. Everyone's so nice on that set. And uh, I am team Johnny. Um, and, you know, I've, I've, turned, I've turned off Danny. No, Danny seems it's to, hard. It's, it's it hard to choose. It is. I mean, Dan, to be fair, at the end, by the end of season two, you, you, Daniel sort of turned around again. It's just the way they, the lives are 108. Yeah. And yeah, it's just brilliant. It's just it's yeah, so, it well, really it's so well written. It is. And I think that's so key in, in any storytelling is making sure that even your bad guy has something about him that makes you want to yeah. can root for him. Yeah. Because then you can turn the tables like that and people are still willing to hang on and see mm-hmm. where it goes. And Exactly, because especially know. when they introduce someone like Chris again, who is really yeah. the bad guy, because then you do, you've already built up that relationship and that that likability of Johnny already. So it's like you do, yep. you, you, you're now torn because it's Danny, Johnny, and Chris. It's, you know, exactly. it's, like, it's so perfect. Got, but then you're wondering with Chris, I felt like the whole way through season two, you're you're like this, which way is it going to go? Or is, yeah. you know, he can't really be, no, he's, you yeah, know, yeah, you're yeah, yeah. Like, Martin plays so well, like, you know, he does that mm-hmm. like, so well, and you're just like, yeah, you are. You're just thinking, he can't really be that bad. No. Yeah, right. You're like, you know, you go to <laughs> the homeless shelter where he's the veteran set, where he's, you know, there, and it's like, oh, you feel really sorry for him, and obviously, you know, that's how he's yeah. it. And it's like, because he can't be that bad. He's obviously just had a really, really bad time, and he just wants to get back. No, no, no you're evil. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just so great about it, because it takes you on that ride, and it, it makes it that much more enjoyable just yeah. to, you know, to hang in there for it. So <laughs> I'm really excited for season three, because, of, you know, as we all know, cliffhanger from season mm. two. We got to see what what happens with that. Of course, you know, spoiler, season three is all about Counselor Blatt's and Mr. Palmer's torrid love affair. Yep. (laughs) All other storylines are unimportant. Um, We'll get back to those later, right? (laughs) (laughs) Dustin and I have talked about that several times, though. Have our own little fan. You've mentioned that to me. (laughs) Sidebar going on. Yeah, oh, he mention, that he, yeah, he mentioned that to me. He said, have a or, seat. you know, I'd be willing to take uh, a kick to the face. You know, I, I think <laughs> yeah. everybody would enjoy seeing Counselor Black go down. I mean, that'd be fun. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, but. It'll be fun. Um, yeah, no, no, Dustin told me about that, that little, uh, <laughs> the little joke. Yeah. The <laughs> and there's actually, there's some fan fiction that I've seen online of where people, I didn't even know this. I mean, I knew it was a thing, mm-hmm. the fan fiction in general, but I really didn't realize the, the depths to which people will take a thread oh, of a yeah. story mm-hmm. and go in a whole other direction. Mm-hmm. It's really interesting. So there's a lot of cool stuff out there. I wonder sometimes how much the the big three pay attention to any of that, or if, yeah, uh, whether I put in, yeah. if there are any correct you know uh, uh assumptions that people have made yeah but i guess yeah. we'll see i wish i had a date you know i mean we're we're all watching all the big threes uh social media accounts yeah. with bated breath waiting to hear but um yeah, it must be hard for those guys to be on pushing it not only just moving yeah. to netflix but also moving it to um you know, to, to obviously to get the season three out anyway, because with the pandemic and everything. So yeah, I can just imagine how yeah. much hassle. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and anticipation. And I read something the other day about some of, you know, there are all these groups of people that uh, on Facebook or wherever else that, that congregate and talk yeah. about all things fandom. Mm-hmm. And I heard that people are getting really anxious Oh yeah, almost to the point of being upset about the delay. And yeah, and it's like it's uh, hard. You know, it's but hard, but it's like you know, this you know, we've got we're in a global pandemic at the moment, and it's you're right. moving, you're moving major platforms, you're right? Moving from YouTube. And it'll be worth it. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, I also, I think, and I, I don't, I don't know, remember where I heard this, so I don't know if this is actually the case, but it made sense to me when I heard it that because um, 
Netflix is released in more than 30 countries and they like to release it on the same day everywhere. Mm -hmm. It sounds like that's a lot of work to do the overdubbing for all the yeah, other languages. Got a, exactly. That's the they got a lot of work to do. Yeah. That, that may be one of the main reasons that it's being held up because they have to get that done. Exactly. I can't wait to hear someone, please, if you live in another country that is not an English speaking country, please send me a clip of the overdub of Counselor Blatt from season one once that gets going because <laughs> I want to hear what it sounds like. I don't know why I just think that's fascinating to have someone else speak for you in another language. But I'll try um, and get the German <laughs> version because I speak German, Ooh. so I might try and log into the German version. Oh, that would be so cool. Well, my Instagram is the Danger Zone, so oh. if anyone <laughs> has a has that you can contact me on there i would love it <laughs> sorry shameless plug oh yeah um, that, that's very very 80s like as well isn't it? <laughs> yeah oh yeah i was wishing i could get kenny loggins to re-record the hit for me and hide away to the danger zone but so far that has yeah. not happened we'll see maybe good. he watches this and yeah, he'll send me a clip send <laughs> thanks <laughs> Uh, so, a question from Emma as well. I'll leave this as for the last one. Is there any? She's excited, obviously, for season three. But can you tell about any upcoming other uh, upcoming projects that you might have? Yes. Well, hi, Emma Dorothy. I'm assuming Emma. Yeah, um, I it's Dorothy on Twitter, but her name's Dorothy Emma. is my uh, my Irish pen pal. I love it. I've um, she's very supportive and always has a kind word, and so. Thank you for that. And thank you for the question. Um, yeah, so I know, and Dustin touched on this a little bit too. Um, I first want to say, I feel like it's hard to, to be upset at all about any of this delay stuff I'm about to mm -hmm. talk about because so many people are going through so much worse situations than, you know, waiting for their footage to drop, obviously. Um, you know, I'm grateful that my family's healthy as of now, and hopefully we'll be able to stay that way. And I, I, my heart goes out to those who have not been so fortunate or who've lost loved ones or jobs. Um, but I hope that the entertainment industry is serving folks in some way to bring some escape and happiness in hard moments. Um, so it, it's hard because, you know, we're all anxious for new content because we are stuck in, in this sort of rut of whatever has been available. Um, so I have two things that I have no idea because of the pandemic when they will be out. Um, one of them is a, a movie called Sun. And it says on IMDb now, and I think this is different from even last week, it's in post-production. So okay. I took that as a good sign that it didn't just stall out somewhere along the line. Um, they wrapped that the week before we shut down here in the Southeast. Right. So they got it, at least the, the principal photography done just under the line. But then mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what would happen with it, with editing and, and everything yeah. else. Um, so hopefully all that's on track. Um, but that is a horror suspense thriller that stars, um, Andy Matichak from the Halloween series and Emil Hirsch. Um, he, I th feel like most people know him from Into the Wild. Right. But that was an older movie. He was most recently, I think, in um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And he is, he's also, he makes music. He's got some cool tunes on Spotify that he writes and produces with, uh, with a, a producer, a Frenchman, that's a producer that he knows, and they come up with some really neat stuff. Um, cool. And then a young uh, star, uh, Luke David Blum, who you may have seen if you saw the um, the new Pete Davidson movie, uh, King of Staten Island. Mm -hmm. He's the little boy in oh, that, okay. so he'll be in it. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. I had a fantastic two weeks in Cleveland, Mississippi, working on that in February. And just another fantastic cast and great crew and just, you know, sometimes you get on a set and it's kind of Dullsville and this was just fun. Everybody was, was friendly and engaged and it was a long, they were there for a long time. Everyone was on location. 
um, the director and the producers were actually from Ireland. So okay. they had come a really long way. And, um, but yeah, so that was a lot of fun to make. And I'm looking forward to, to that coming out. I'm hoping because it's horror that they'll try to shoot for maybe like a Halloween-ish fall release. But again, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. And then the other thing was a pilot that I did for a, a series called We've Got Something in Common. Mm -hmm. and that's going to be a really, um, a really interesting one. Um, there are even two guys in it from, um, from Cobra Kai. Okay. AJ, AJ Hicks and um, uh, Christopher Ryan Lewis are in that. And, so we don't really know when that's going to, cause that as a pilot, it has to get picked up from yeah. somewhere first. And, um, but that was super fun to work on and um, Candy Rain uh, spearheaded that and was fantastic to work with. And so, yeah, so we're just kind of sitting around waiting to see <laughs> when these things will appear. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like I said, it's um, I'm, I'm just grateful to be healthy and, hanging in there right now. So yeah. I can wait, I can wait, I can wait for <laughs> season three of Cobra Kai to, you know, I want to see how the story progresses, but I'm, we all just have to be patient, I suppose. <clears throat> yep. Lesson. Definitely. <laughs> I was going to say, I actually know Emil from Troll Hunters. He's the voice of Jim Lake oh, Jr. as well yeah, from yeah. Troll Hunters. The, the show, my son watches that. So. He's been around forever. I mean, he. I think yeah, he he's was got. A, a just, I, was just, I just bring up, brought him up on IMDb, and I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> yeah. And when I've seen him, uh, the, one of the original ones I um, watched, uh, it's the surfing one. Um, Dog, Lords of Dogtown, is it? What's oh. if you have your IMDb up? Yeah, I'm just looking through it now. Hang on. Is that the right name? Uh, I'm sorry if it's not uh, Lords of Dogtown. Yeah, is that did yeah. I get that right? Oh my you gosh, I can't really. believe I pulled that out. I'm I'm I have this weird disconnect in my brain for like I'll watch films and unless it's Raising Arizona, I cannot quote <laughs> anything. Mm -hmm. I, the plot line will be vaguely in there. I guess it'll serve me well in in my senior years because I'll be able to rewatch things over and over yeah. again. And it'll never get old. <laughs> but um, some people are just walking encyclopedias of actors and directors, and mm -hmm. you know, the, the quoting lines and plot points. And I can't. I don't have that skill. Is that you? I'll call you when I need. <laughs> I'm like, what was that? You know, person thing plot point quote. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of them. Not all of them. I won't say all of them. But I, I remember when I, I used to be in the territorial army and we uh, with friends, and we used to a lot of the time we used to go over the hills and to keep us company. We'd recite all of Monty Python and Blackadder sketches. <laughs> oh wow! So, yeah, uh, but That's I'm, I'm, I do have a knack of being able to pick up a film if my son's watching. I'll come in on the film and it'd be the opening credit. Or it'll be one line in it, and I'll go, that, that's that film. And, and I'll, and I'll <laughs> just sit there, it. and I'll look at the film, and I'll go, right, that's that actor, that's that actor. Oh, this is done by... And she's like, how do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> that's a really an amazing skill. <laughs> just oh, man, I love Monty Python. I love the oh, young yeah. ones. I, I watched that again recently, just because oh, I had such nostalgia for mm -hmm. it, and it, it, was, it didn't hold up the way I thought it would. I didn't laugh as hard at the jokes. This yeah, it's very strange, different. I don't know why, because I loved it back in the day. Yeah, but you it's, know, yeah, it's I don't know. It's, it's oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't beat Monty Python or Blackadder. It's like I love and the, the final Blackadder. Blackadder goes forth that episode where they go over the top. I cry every time. It's the most Aww. emotional scene that you, you any because also it's comedy all the way through. And then yeah. that fine, you know, that, that final when they go over the top, it's like he goes black. He goes um, black. I yeah, I'm scared. <laughs> you know, it's like, and he's like, "All oh, right." Oh, it's and getting then, real now. It is, yeah, yeah, exactly. And when uh -huh. he goes, you know, goes where the last of the tiddly is. You know? <laughs> so I used to love. Uh, well, I I still love Doctor Who. Oh my gosh, David oh, yeah, Tennant great. can do no wrong in my mind. But um, and that would be a person I would love to work with someday. Mm. I just think he's fantastic. He's a great um, yeah. But um, but then also back in the day, um, what's the other show? Uh, Red Dwarf. I used to love that. Did you ever watch that? I love that as well. My son's just I made. I got him into it. He's binge watched all see every season. Really? 
See, I need to go look for some of those things and, and show the kids. Some oh, of yeah, stuff. they're all on Netflix. They're great. I've met yeah. the cast as well because they've come to the Comic Cons over here. So oh, yeah. Like, oh, Rimmer, Lister, the cat. Yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> okay. So I know, I know, I know you, and, you and I had talked about this, but I just signed with Scene Stealers because mm-hmm. I know you had talked with, well, we're all, they're trying to get everyone on board so we can have this yeah. big Cobra Kai group that, that um, goes to cons when we can have cons again mm-hmm. in person. Uh, but yeah, I, that was something I thought, Ooh, if we get to go to the UK, I'm totally going to dork out and go <laughs> for all these people that I've, I've always wanted to meet that. I mean, I met David Tennant last year and he came uh-huh. to dragon con. I volunteer there. So yeah. I got to meet him and, um, and that you know that was amazing just briefly i had to do the photo thing he wasn't oh, he wasn't yeah. wandering around so um but yeah i think that that's something really different not all those folks come over here mm. for the cons at least yeah. not at dragon con that i've seen yeah. so the same likewise to them in yeah. the uk <laughs> i bumped uh, two years ago into birmingham and met edmondson you know, from bottom, uh, for Adrian Edmondson, Aid Edmondson. Oh, oh okay, yeah, sorry, from, yeah, yeah, Blackadder and, <laughs> and Bottom and <laughs> and uh, stuff like and young ones, even he, Vivian, he was yeah. Young, yeah, Vivian, Vivian, very shy, very shy, wouldn't look anyone in the really? eye, yeah, very, yeah. very yeah. um, got mad, got met Mads Mickelson there and Carl Urban. That's always hard. I, I like when you meet somebody, and and everyone we met at Dragon Con was just lovely, you know, oh, yeah. they're friendly and that's got to be a hard day i would yeah. think for, especially for the big stars of the long lines yeah they've been um, non-stop i mean you know, the birmingham one is saying like mads mickelson's line never stopped it was just on and ongoing and, uh, yeah. and michael bean i interviewed him at his hotel then the following week he was at a convention i saw him and his wife and i went to speak to his wife to say hello and she was like oh and she stopped his entire he had about 100 people in the queue and she's like michael wait wait this is the lovely interview with chris remember from oh, last week he's like, oh chris he goes my son's here as well we're coming for coffee or a beer afterwards and i was like and all the queue just wow. looking at me with evil looks going who are you and i was like oh. <laughs> i'm somebody <laughs> Yeah, I was like, Corporal funny. Hicks wants to go for a beer. <laughs> yeah, don't we all? Don't we all just want to be appreciated in that way? You know, yeah. that's like basic human nature. Just want <laughs> that kindness. That's really awesome. It was of everyone should be that way. Oh, I promise, yeah. I will try. <laughs> get the opportunity someday yeah. to go to the cons. I will try to be as friendly as possible because <laughs> I think that's important. Yeah, uh, but right now, all that stuff's virtual, so I guess. Yeah, it is. We'll have to wait and see. We will. Uh, cool. I'm going to bring my last question now, Erin, because we've, we've talked away for so long now. <laughs> this is yeah, no, sure. okay. yeah. <laughs> it's, This is that off-the-wall question, which I know you've okay. seen because you've seen. It's, um, if you could have a Muppet created after you, <laughs> yeah, would it be? <laughs> I did see that you did this, and I forgot <laughs> to think about it before I said, oh, i got to think about that one. <laughs> this is a personality question. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. Um, I, my mom and I have an Ernie and Bert thing because my name's Aaron, but my mom always called me Ernie. Right. And so I called her Bert. So there, <clears> there's <throat> a special, special thing there. <laughs> but I think um, if we're trying to actually go with like personality traits, that something that would actually, mm-hmm. a Muppet that would actually embody me, yep. probably a combination of Statler and Waldorf. <laughs> yeah, I think those uh resonate the most with me so. <laughs> uh, like, uh, the only thing i do for it, burp, burp, uh, uh, burp. <laughs> i can't do it properly. it makes yeah. it into my it makes it into my kermit which is like burp, burp, burp. <laughs> that's good yeah, get it on set, <laughs> <laughs> i had a dog as a kid that we named after a muppet uh it was an obscure one his name was muppy and he's, <laughs> i have a a record um the gatefold with all the Muppets inside. And then at the bottom, it had a, a legend of who's who. Mm-hmm. And he, you couldn't even see him, but <laughs> he had his name at the bottom. So we're like, there we go. Muppy, Muppy the Muppet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I loved all of that. There's a museum here in Atlanta. Um, we have the, um, the Center for Puppetry Arts okay. here. And it gets, they have their own group of very accomplished puppeteers, but then they get touring shows. And again, one of our stages that's probably taking a hit right now, but 
they have a fantastic museum there. If you ever get to Atlanta, they have, um, I guess part of it's rotating. They have a lot of different Muppets, but they have uh, one of the Skeksis from oh, yeah, uh, our friend. Crystal. Mm -hmm. Like They're much bigger than I thought. Like yeah. obviously you know somebody has to operate it and you get that, mm -hmm. but it's just so cool to see it in person. Fantastic. So they have a lot of really, and, and some historic um, puppets from, um, from Asia and Africa and different uh, continents from yeah. ages, ages old. Like you, you wouldn't want to touch them. They seem like they would fall apart, but wow. they've been preserved. And yeah. um, I'm not speaking very eloquently on the history <laughs> there, but they have, it's a really great uh, mm -hmm. museum. If, if someone comes to Atlanta, it's a little off the beaten path of touristy things to yeah. do, but it's, if you're a film buff and <laughs> enjoy any of that kind of, um, animated puppetry stuff it's definitely worth checking out fantastic well i know the skexis the, the question came because mike quinn who's been on my show before he was in star wars he's also a puppeteer with jim henson for 30 years and he puppet he was a puppeteer for a skexis on, wow. the, on the new dark he might have been, been. <laughs> yeah excellent um erin it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you is there anything you'd like to say quickly to people who are watching or listening oh gosh just thank you everybody for uh for just being such big fans of Cobra Kai. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for that show. And um, thank you, Chris, for having me on. And uh, I hope to connect with everybody either on social media or hopefully at a con someday.